The K-pop industry is scary and unforgiving and has unfortunately cost a lot of lives. Many idols tragically ended their lives due to the relentless harassment and pressure they faced. An So Jin is a less known victim of the harsh realities of the industry, but her story is just as important. So Jin was known as a contestant on the Kara Project, which was a survival show featuring the girl group Kara and was broadcast on NBC Music in 2014. The program aimed to find a new member of Kara among the DSP Media's trainees after Nicole and Ji Young had left the group. With only three members left, the company couldn't afford to disband the group at their peak, so instead they decided to make their trainees compete for a spot. The show itself, especially compared to other survival shows that are airing today, was pretty boring and uneventful. The contestants had to complete five missions and perform different Kara songs live on stage, with the judges giving their evaluation afterward. But even though to viewers this was just another survival show, for these girls it was the last chance to debut, so the competition was brutal behind the scenes. They all stood out with their their talents and skills, but unfortunately only one trainee would get chosen to debut in the group. The original plan was to add two members so they could fill out the two spots left by Nicole and Jin Young, but in the end, the company decided to go with just one trainee. And So Jin was one of the seven DSP media trainees to compete in the show. She was the oldest contestant among the trainees at only 22 years old. Before Kara Project, she participated in Superstar K1, but she had plans to debut in a DSP media group as she had been part of the company as a trainee for five years. However, her father was very vocal about how little he supported Sojin's dreams of becoming a K-pop idol, which added even more pressure on her to do well and eventually debut in Kara. At first, things seemed to have been going well. Since the beginning, she and Somin, who would end up debuting in April, were among the favorite contestants. Sojin was really mature and bubbly, and she had never failed to lift everyone's spirits. She was also given a leadership position early on since she was the eldest trainee. But even though it was a burden, Sojin never let it show as she kept going on with the same enthusiasm. She was a winner in everyone's eyes from early on. She was talented, charming, and had visuals that would match the rest of the Kara members. Considering all this, imagine everyone's surprise when Ho Young Ji was crowned as the winner and was the trainee who ended up joining Kara. This was a heartbreaking moment for Sojin that shattered her dreams. Young Ji's win was controversial in a lot of ways, and there were a lot of theories about it. She wasn't a part of the first two episodes due to health reasons, so people felt like her spot as number one was undeserving. Despite her talent and charm, some believed she shouldn't have won because she missed the first two episodes, unlike the other trainees who had been there for all six. However, some said that this had happened because DSP Media didn't want the new member to possibly overshadow the current Kara members, and both Sojin and Soman had a fandom of their own at that point. Because of this, the public thought that Youngji was chosen to join the group because she wouldn't be as popular as Gyuri, Sungyeon, and Hara, and the group would still be complete. There were also rumors that her family was rich, but what mattered was that she was the one to debut, with Soman coming in second place and Sojin coming in third. After the show was over, the contestants went their separate ways. Soman, who came in second, debuted as a member of April in 2015, but then left to debut as a part of Card in 2017. Chaewon, who got fourth place, also debuted in April and was a part of the group until their disbandment. Chae Young, the trainee who placed fifth, did a lot before finally debuting in April. She took part in Produce 101 before debuting as part of the project groups Siva and IBI in 2016. Then in 2017, she debuted in April, Shi Yoon, who came in sixth, also competed in Produce 101, and Yuji debuted as part of Applebee after leaving DSP Media. And once the group disbanded, she debuted in So Do Ae. Looking at how their careers unfolded after the Kara projects, we can assume that most of the participants were dealt with a bad hand. All the April members were involved in the mistreatment scandals and have been trying to rebuild their careers ever since. However, Sojin unfortunately had the most tragic end of all of them. One of the biggest concerns of Sojin throughout the show was her age. Even though she was only 22, she was the eldest of the trainees and had been there for five long years, waiting for the company to finally put her on stage so she could show what she worked towards all these years. And she had a lot to show too, as her skills were only enhanced and improved during the Kara project. However, she was unfortunately considered too old to debut, even though she was very young as the average debuting age was 18 to 19. Because of this, Kara project was kind of an all or nothing deal for her. Either she would debut in this group, which would open the doors for her idol career, or she would fail, and all the time, money and effort she had put into debuting would go down the drain. Watching friends and fellow trainees progress in their lives by debuting, graduating, or finding jobs only added more stress onto Sojin's plate. After five years as a trainee and her father's disapproval of her career choice, the show's conclusion with her placing third, not even second, felt like her world had come crumbling down. Fans and viewers were still hopeful about both her and Soman. If they didn't end up debuting in Kara, there were still hopes that they would debut in a new 
girl group or that DSP Media would form a group just to include the trainees that didn't make it. It made sense. They had built an audience and fan base through the show, shown their skills, and proven themselves to be worthy of an idol career. Even if DSP Media didn't want to debut her, there was probably some other company that would be desperate to get her hands on her and debut her in their new group. But everyone was expecting her to be a member or even the leader of April, and as you may know, this never ended up happening. In January of 2015, a few months after the show came to an end, Sojin left DSP Media without much noise. It was said that she went back home after the show ended, but overall, there was no official announcement on her departure, nor was it ever revealed what happened for her to leave. DSP said that they came to a mutual agreement to end her contract, but the general consensus is that the company terminated her contract without notice, a decision which was seen as questionable. Since Sojin was there for so long, you would think that DSP would know what they would be doing with her. While it's acknowledged that the industry is harsh and unforgiving and not all trainees debut, dedicating five years to a company should count for something. Keeping her there for an extended period, making her participate in the show, and having her build a potential fan base only to terminate her contract seemed like a problematic decision, and it was Sojin's last straw. According to her friends, she had been suffering from depression for some time at that point, so the termination of her contract completely destroyed her. She blamed herself for not coming in first on the show and convinced herself that the Kara project was her last chance to debut. So on February 25th, 2015, only a month after the termination of her contract, Sojin took her own life. Reports state that Sojin was discovered unconscious in a garden in front of her apartment complex. Even though she was sent to the hospital immediately and the medical staff did their best to save her, she did not make it. The police suspected that she jumped from the 10th floor of the apartment but urged the public not to make any assumptions on why she chose to do this. This case is still known to be one of the most tragic ones as Sojin was so young, full of hope and life. Just reading the things that her label mates said about her can bring you to tears and shed a light to a terrible aspect of the industry. Idols have been debuting young since the dawn of time. Icon Boa debuted when she was only 13. Shiny's Taemin, FX's Crystal, Hyuna, Ives Won Young, and NCT's Jisung all debuted when they were 14, and BTS's Jungkook and Red Velvet's Yeri debuted when they were only 15. However, nowadays, despite the overall criticism, the age at which idols are debuting is decreasing severely. For male idols, it's more ideal for the company to debut them when they're younger due to the fact that they have to enlist at some point. Female idols encounter a challenge seemingly worse than military obligations, ageism. In the entertainment industry, women are often viewed as outdated by the age of 30, and in K-pop, female idols are deemed to be past their prime by 25. Therefore, debuting when they're younger allows them about 10 years before being labeled as too old, making it a more appealing prospect for companies. So despite the fact that Soman was literally just starting her life and was very young, she still felt like her career was over just because she couldn't debut at 22. Her unfortunate and tragic passing should have served as a warning to the industry when it comes to considering human beings as disposable, yet no changes have been made. Just how many people need to lose their lives just because the industry refuses to change their ways?